10 Most Powerful Ancient Weapons Number 10. Shuriken is a tiny weapon originated from Japan, which was majorly used as a hidden dagger. Also recognized as throwing stars, the shuriken tactical were included in the martial arts in many famous schools of Japan and China. The edges were made sharp enough for producing hidden cuts on the opponent's body. Additionally, they were even soaked in poison and trapped the victim by stamping on it. Other method was to apply dagger in a muddy area with application of animal feces to allow the formation of dangerous bacterial infections. This could fall the victim to incurable infections. Number 9. Although sometimes called a sickle sword, the ancient Egyptian kopesh was more of a cross between a sword and a battle axe. During earlier Egyptian times, the mace represented ruling power, but the kopesh's deadliness on the battlefield eventually made it the preferred status symbol of Egypt's elite. The kopesh was usually cast out of a single piece of bronze and could be quite heavy. The blade had a curve, like a sickle, though only the outside edge was sharpened. Much like the battle axe, the kopesh could be used as a hacking weapon, though its shape also made it efficient at slashing. The inner part of the curve was equally functional and could trap an arm or yank away an opponent's shield. Some had small snares for that very purpose. Number 8. Unlike the kopesh, the shotel was a true sickle sword once used in ancient Ethiopia. Its shape made it extremely difficult to block with another sword or even a shield. The shotel would just curve around it to puncture the defender. Despite that and its vicious appearance, it was almost universally considered useless. Fighting with a shotel proved quite difficult. Because of the shape of the blade, even drawing it from its scabbard was somewhat awkward. Scabbards stretched a foot longer than the swords themselves and were worn, pointing behind the owner which meant drawing it with a blade facing the correct way required a large bend of the wrist. Number 7. As the name says, the wave-bladed sword is in the form of a blade, which happened to be a ruthless tool of ancient times. The wave-bladed sword was also recognized as flame-bladed sword. Additionally, the weapon was not just designed to resemble as a flame, but also for a specific reason in combat. It produces a weird vibration while fighting with the opponent that helps the swordsman in powerful combat. Number 6. Fakirs Ancient Muslim and Hindu ascetics and mendicants were not permitted to carry weapons, so they had to improvise to protect themselves. They created the madu, which was apparently not an official weapon. Madu was originally made from two Indian antelope horns connected perpendicularly by a crossbar. With the horn tips at opposite ends, the madu, or fakir's horns, was excellent for stabbing, though the fakirs considered it to be primarily for defense. The style of fighting with the madu is still practiced today. Called mankombu, it is a part of the larger art of silamban, an ancient, weapons-based Indian martial art. Mankombu, deer horns, is named after the weapon's material, as fakirs and salamban artists eventually began using other kinds of animal horns. The art form is dying, however, as current laws prohibit the use of deer or antelope horns. Number 5. The Samurai of India, Rajput, lived a lifestyle dedicated to fighting and honor, using weapons like the double-bladed Haladi knife to cut down their enemies. Haladi had two double-edged blades connected to the ends of a single handle. It was believed to be a thrusting weapon, although the slightly curved blade could just as easily be used for slashes and parries. Some types of Haladi had a metal band similar to knuckle dusters covering one side of the handle, where yet another spike or blade could be attached. Number 4. Qatar was a masterpiece of push dagger. The weapon emphasized an H-shaped handle with a sharp projection at the front. As the weapon was mounted on the fore portion of the knuckle, it was used as a single-shot assassination tool. This weapon was created in the 14th century and came from the Vijayanagara Empire. Basically, in southern parts of India, the katar was used as main part in the Indian martial arts. Number 3. Kakut were spiked rings used in ancient Japan. Though a similar weapon called the shobo was made of wood, kakut were usually iron and had from one to three spikes. A user would generally wear either one or two rings, 
one for his middle or index finger and another on his thumb. The spikes were usually turned inward and applied to pressure points by gripping limbs or even the neck, which would stun an opponent and cause a nasty puncture wound. Number 2. Bag Nak, also recognized as Va Nakya, was an incredibly dangerous tool to mount on the knuckles. Originated from India, the weapon was first used by the Emperor Shivaji to defeat Avzal Khan of Bijapur. This ancient weapon was a masterpiece for silent assassinations when poisoned. The name emphasized tiger claw in Indian language, which happens to be the most powerful hand tool right from the ancient days. Number 1. Urumi is considered as the most powerful ancient weapon of all time. The weapon also stands as the most difficult of all the weapons to master. The reason being that the weapon was made of a flexible iron and brass mixture. About 4-5 to five feet in length, Urumi was constructed with multiple blades mounted on a single handle. The flexibility could cause damage and harm the owner itself if not handled correctly. Just imagine if the weapon could still strike and hit at you despite having a shield put henceforth. Furthermore, mastering it was terribly difficult, but the weapon could go unconditional if one mastered it. Combating in a battlefield situation was somewhat tricky, but it was basically made for one-on-one -on -one fighting.